Hey there, this is Kate and Jen and Mel who couldn't be here from Tested. We have been working on something really cool and super fun and we are very excited to show it to you. Let's take a look. This is the butt keyboard from hell. So you can tell it's an instrument. It plays notes on these little butts and it also plays the butt song. Jen, now why on earth would we make something like this? <laughs> uh, so we were invited, Mel, Kate, and I were invited to participate in a YouTube Maker Secret Santa. It's a group that gets together every year for the past couple years, and they make each other a gift and make a build video about it. So we have been asked to be part of the challenge this year. Uh, and this challenge is put together by Ruth Amos, who is um, part of Kids Invent Stuff. And she's amazing. And we drew Sam, who goes by Look Mom, No Computer. Uh, Sam is a UK-based electronic artist and musician. Uh, he makes these incredible sort of sculptural pieces out of found objects and old technology. Um, and he has a museum uh, called This Museum is Not Obsolete, where he displays a lot of his creations and uh, makes videos and does performances on YouTube as well. So yeah, we were inspired by him and some of his past projects. Uh, we wanted to do an instrument similar to things he's done before, but we were kind of looking for some inspiration. Yeah, it was actually, so we were driving home, Mel and I were driving home from your house, Kate, when this idea dawned on us. And I was thinking about, uh, there's a painting uh, uh, from the 1500s. It's a old sort of like medieval Renaissance triptych uh, by Hieronymus Bosch and it's called The Garden of Earthly Delights. You might have seen it. It's a very iconic painting, and it's three panels, and it shows heaven and hell and the Garden of Earthly Delights, and it's sort of these weird scenes of different figures and creatures and demons. And in the painting, really, if you look very closely, there's one figure in the hell panel that has a a series of musical notes painted on its butt <laughs> in in the painting. And so there's a student, a music student, um, who transcribed the notes in the painting into modern musical notation and recorded it for piano. And we thought, how cool would it be if we made a keyboard out of butts that plays <laughs> the song? So the way we started is we had a $100 budget, 75 pounds. And we needed to do figure out what we could make with those constraints. Um, so the base of it basically um, came from Adam, right? Yeah, this was a box. Uh, he was getting rid of a whole bunch of stuff in his collection of uh, you know cases and you know enclosures that he has. And I thought this one looked really cool, so I saved it. Didn't know what I would use it for. And maybe about a year later, this project came up, and I was like, ah, I have something that would be perfect for this. Uh, we thought it was an instrument box because it's got this like velvet lining and there's a sort of swoop on the inside. But I actually looked up this company, um, Kilfit West Germany. They actually make uh, camera lenses, like telephoto lenses. So cool. this box was used for a camera lens. Nice. And so basically you did a few modifications on it to make it functional for us. What are some of the things you did? Yeah, so it needed a little bit of repair work. Um, I kind of, I like using something that's old because you can kind of see the the... I don't know, the life that it's had before. The character. So, exactly, yeah, the character. And like whoever had this, owned this previously, made some repairs. So like the lining was um, peeling off in a bunch of places. So I had to kind of like fix that up. Um, the hinge was missing screws. So I, I did a lot of that. Um, also in the inside, if we want to pull this out, um, there is uh, a foam backer that we used. <laughs> We used a foam backer for the sort of mounting plate, um, and I made some attachments on the inside of the box to kind of support all of that. Uh, and then also all the laser cut sort of sections. Um, yeah, so like this um, base plate here for the keys, uh, you laser cut that panel out, and then um, you laser cut some of these figures here and some pieces for the lid as well, as well as a stopper for 
the lid to stay open. Yeah, because there's so much stuff on it. Uh, there's kind of like a little kickstand. So lots of structural things to modify the box and make it fit uh, for what we wanted to do in terms of the instrument. Nice. And then when it came to the instrumentation and the electronics itself, we of course turn to Mel, who is just a creative genius when it comes to this. So Mel is gonna to explain to you a little bit more about how they engineered this masterpiece. All right, so let's check out this synthesizer. Finger snaps, okay. So um, basically it's just not a synthesizer. It is a sound effects board by Adafruit that we ended up using as a workaround to basically make it work with our budget. So originally we were given only about a hundred dollars that we could use to make this whole magical piece happen. And I didn't want to take all of the money. Like I was really tempted to, like, don't get me wrong. Like there was this really cool like board they also have in Adafruit that actually can play MIDI notes. And so I could do, it was like, ugh, it was so indulgent. I could make a keyboard that then interfaced with this synthesizer and then have it play like harp noises or some really cool like cheesy keyboard from the 80s and it would have been freaking rad but it would have also been like 80% of the budget. So um, we went with this instead and I had to kind of do some workarounds to get it such that I only took about half the budget which was like about 50. So so I could just get the sound, the sound effects board itself, as well as like these really nice clicky buttons and all the other electronics to get this thing to work. So um, to, to do the workaround, I essentially did all of the actual synthesizer elements outside using a DAW called Logic. The DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation. And so there's this really cool synthesizer that I ended up using called Sculpture, which basically, I'll just play some notes so you guys can hear. Oh. It's really cool, it's like a, a string synth. And you can do all kinds of really wacky stuff with it. So I played around with it to make it kind of sound like, I don't know, like I guess a lute. <laughs> really bad with these instrument noises. Some string set type thing with some eerie like visceral noises, but like say if I modulated it, moved it a little, like say I wanted to set, make it sound super alien. So you can play around, the cool thing about the synthesizer is you can kind of play around with the material of the impact that happens when you strike a note. But basically to make the whole track, I essentially created a synthesizer patch from Sculpture. Then I did a sequence of the actual notes from the butt piano that had been transcribed. And I then recorded that and put that into one of these buttoxes. So because there's all a bunch of, I did a bunch of verb and also compression on this track. You don't like, it literally is just this synthesizer playing by itself. So it gives like a really nice ethereal eerie sound, but the decay is incredibly long on that, which makes it like really hard for you to actually play the track using a sampler. So samplers, they have like a little bit of a catch 22, which is they're not a real synthesizer. So you can't do things like polyphonic. You can't play these things simultaneously. You gotta play one note at a time. And if you actually wanna play this like a piano, it's like not gonna work if you have a super long like note like this. If I, because it will take too long for this to play and then for you to do. So that's the difference, right? So in order to comp like compensate for that, to kind of make it sort of playable with the notes, I had to kill not only the reverb, but I also have to cut out the actual note itself. So I'm gonna put on the, a synthesizer that's very similar, same sculpture, but without the verb. And then from that, I recorded an audio clip and I even cut it down further. So this is one of the notes. Let me just mute that. And so I added even a fade to make it so that the response time was like somewhat playable. So. Yeah, and that's kind of the gist. That's, that's pretty much sculpture in a nutshell. That's what I ended up doing the workaround and because of that, we have like these really nice, like pretty butts. 
it's kind of cool, you know, like, I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm, yeah, you know, and then you get this. <laughs> we can throw that in. Can you do that with a synthesizer? Probably, but it won't sound as good. All right, now once Mel had all of the engineering figured out and everything programmed, I got this laser cut backing from you, Jen, and Mel gave me these amazing 3D printed butts that they printed on their Prusa. Um, I had the job of looking at the painting and trying to sort of simplify it and get a bunch of elements that could be represented. So I painted this backer to uh, represent the environment of the Garden of Earthly Delights, but I didn't want to include too many, I, basically figures or beings or anything like that because we really wanted it to be a background to accentuate the real star of the show, which let's admit it, are the butts. Uh, for the butts, I looked through the painting and picked out different elements, things like different creatures that had patterns on them or any sort of color combinations that really stuck out to me. And I just picked some of my favorite ones and did a little butt painting in, in my shop, which was a lovely way to spend the day. Um, and got all of those together. And then I went back and we wanted to represent the triptych. And since the butts and the background here were really just of the garden, um, we did two small portraits um, that you laser cut out and I picked an element from both heaven and hell, which I realized only afterwards, I think this is a adorable, cute little giraffe. And I like to think that this skull is probably the skull of that giraffe. So it's really like a full circle thing we've got going on. Um, and they flank the beautiful sheet music that Jen, you painted up. And then I tossed it back to you to do a lot of the finishing details. So what else did you do after that? Yeah, so we, we had a little bit left in our budget uh, after all the electronics and stuff. Uh, so Mel and I went to Urban Ore, which is uh, sort of an architectural salvage and thrift store here in the Bay Area. Uh, and we had a really great time digging through uh, kind of their toy bins to find all sorts of stuff that we could cut up and turn into this scene. So uh, this is... This is the three-dimensional representation of the painting um, made up of all old toy parts that we found in the, in the junk bins there. So I did a lot of, um, kind of channeled my uh, Sid from Toy Story <laughs> and cut up and Frankensteined all these pieces together to make this uh, sort of hellscape scene um, with a bunch of you know creatures and hybrid animal human uh, things in, you know, it's the color scheme is very much based on the painting and I also was looking at the painting that you'd already done on the butts and on the scene to try to tie everything together and make it cohesive. Um, so this this was super fun and then just adding some other little details like the plaque on the front um, which was laser cut um, and then obviously the notes on the inside which uh, are the notation from the butt in the painting. So this is just like a stained piece of paper to make it look super old like it's from the 1500s. And yeah, the idea is that you could read the music, play the butts, and uh, yeah, I think I think this was such a great way to combine all of our different skill sets yeah. into something that showcases all of them. One hundred percent. I mean, not only do the three of us just enjoy working together more than anybody else, but I think that our skills really complement each other, and the way we were able to divide up the work and put a little bit of ourselves into each of our pro projects, it was. It was really lovely. Yeah, this was such a delightful project. And it's like the right brand of silly, I think, for the three of us. We yeah. really enjoy this kind of humor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we had such a great time working on this. And again, huge shout out to Mel who couldn't be here. They were a huge driving force behind the full engineering of this piece and the creative genius making the musical notes happen. So. This was a dream team, yeah. and I, I can't wait for the three of us to get to work together again. I know. Such a fun collaboration. We're ex excited to see this in Sam's shop, and we hope that you enjoy the other YouTube Secret Santas on the, the playlist of all the other makers that created stuff for this, uh, for this big Secret Santa exchange. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Yeah.
Yeah, that was yeah, a good was one. Uh, this is our Secret Santa box. It has arrived all the way from the UK, just like this, in fact. Absolutely. No no treatment, no nothing. Yeah, this we have all natural this at all. This gift comes to us from James Bruton, um, and uh, we, we're going to unbox it. Yeah, here. unbox Are it. You ready? Live okay. action right now. Whoa! It didn't even come with bubble wrap this time. I know. It's yeah, fantastic. The, I can't believe it made it through customs just like this. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's uh, some kind of a, it's a, it's a mouth mop. It's a, like a, a speaking, speaking robot, robot thing. Yeah, this is a uh, really beautifully engineered. Lots of three D printed, it's like molded, a nice like hazard yellow. Yeah, with a nice. It's almost like. They looked at your colors. And I know it's like, like this. Very, yeah. yeah, it's very, mm -hmm. very on brand for Shack Attack. Yeah, um, indeed, indeed. So, so I think uh, there's some batteries here. Yes. And there's a speaker, and there's a keyboard. So, all right. Ooh. Yeah, that's cool. All right, and so what could it possibly be? Maybe it's uh, a mouther uh, of mouthing. So the mouth shapes the different uh, the different sounds. The mouth yes. appears to be moving with the sounds. Uh, and like minor discomfort. Uh, Generally, all uh, faces we make as humans <laughs> when we talk. Yeah, in a very exaggerated form. I, I mean, I feel like it, it has the speech sounds to say some. Kind it has of a secret word. cryptic message. He's sending us a message, and we need to decipher what that could possibly be. <laughs> we didn't read any we didn't read instructions. Anything. No. We don't know anything about how this works. By George, we're American. Why do we read instructions? <laughs> all right, so, I mean, we... I don't know. Why don't, why don't you just freestyle? A freestyle, yeah. Like, I have not touched this at all, ever. because we put a yeah, part in it's like, our keyboard. Yeah, it's a kindred spirit. Yeah, great minds. Yeah, great minds, know? like, comes from something. It all expels somewhere. <laughs> uh, I feel like it, it, I got a the beginning of a Merry Christmas. Yes, Christmas. And then some botchery there. And then maybe a new year. Maybe a new year. I think that's I think that's what it was trying to say. It was trying to communicate. Yeah, yeah use, use your imagination. Yeah, use your yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it is all about imagination. Yeah. Uh this this is a pretty incredible piece of machinery um, that James made for us. If you want to see how he made this, go check out the video on his channel. Um we'll put the link down below. And uh yeah, check out the whole playlist because there's a whole bunch of people making gifts back and forth. Yes. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and I guess we'll see you all later. I...